now it is a pleasure to be addressed by our brothers and the supporters as regional leaders provide us with an all-out vision on Egypt. Mr. Ibrahim Abdazim al Asaf, the Minister of Finance of Saudi Arabia. In the name of God Almighty, the compassionate prayer beyond the most noblest of prophets, Prophet Muhammad, his kinsmen and followers. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, may the blessings of Allah be upon you. At the outset, I wish to extend my gratitude to the government and people of sisterly Egypt for the kind hospitality and uh, the good preparations for this conference. And I want to congratulate you, as a matter of fact, for the great success of this conference. And with the will of God, uh, we'll realize results, as I have mentioned by my colleague, the Minister of Finance, great developments for Egypt's economy. As a matter of fact, all the speeches we have listened to from the Prime Minister, their Excellencies, the Ministers, all are reassuring, first of all, of the results that have so far been realized in a very short while. And also, we, as uh, for the plans in the future for Egypt's economy is promising. With the will of God, we expe expect every success. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to speak about certain points that are related perhaps from the regional viewpoint of e Egypt's relations, particularly with the Arab countries. Yet, I will give, I will have an opportunity to realize, to speak about the progress that have been realized in the structural and economic reforms that have been taken here and uh, shed light on Egypt's development economic plan and social plan that will reinforce the local uh, investments and the attraction of foreign investments while adding to the confidence in the Egyptian economy. And we hope that this will be will support uh, the government's efforts on the f to put the economy on the uh, path of sustainable development. The stability of Egypt and its economic recovery that is sustainable represents a great importance, not only for Egypt and its people, but also for the whole, the whole region at large and the whole world. Uh, the development of Egypt is very useful for its uh, region and for the stability of the world. And as to the financial and economic uh, uh, stability, it would add to the stability of the region, a matter that causes some optimistic after what Egypt has witnessed after the transitional period in order to stabilize the economy and uh, r regain uh, uh, confidence in the economy and the recovery of tourism in order to have a comprehensive and sustainable development that will provide new job opportunities that are diversified, hence reinforcing prosperity and social welfare. The economic development uh, this year will be at a good rate, and we have listened to the expectations that were mentioned during the first part of the year. It was expected that this would ex in exceed the 5%, and this is very satisfactory, an indication of a great development in the economy in a short period of time after the different developments in the Egyptian economy. And we hope that this growth would continue in the next stage. From such a standpoint, we wish to pay tribute to the efforts that were exerted by the government in order to implement, as has been referred by uh, many uh, speakers about the economic reforms that took place despite the difficult transitional period that Egypt has witnessed and the different uh, courageous steps that were taken that we have heard about from the finance minister and uh, the improvement in the fiscal uh, plan. This was a courageous step. The, uh, or good orientation of expenditure through the different uh, steps adopted such the taxation system and the local and domestic investments and uh, the welcome of foreign investments in Egypt. Also, I wish to mention the flexibility of 
the banking system despite the challenges that were faced by the Egyptian economy and the preservation of a high rates of profitability and liquidity and the great drop in the bad debts and the governor of the central bank spoke about the good procedures that were uh, adopted and the efforts that were exerted in order to limit the inflation pressures as a result of lifting some of the subsidies in the field of energy and also the flexibility in the rate of exchange. I believe those are very good steps that have re uh, assured the, the uh, investor in the Egyptian economy. I also have to underline the importance of the sustainability in the economic reform procedures, and this was underlined by His Excellency the Prime Minister, and that was underlined also by the ministers, and we are confident that that reform march will continue in the field of the economy, a method that will provide the government with flexibility in limiting poverty and focusing on education and health in the society. It, is, uh, it goes without saying that uh, there is a deep relation, historic relation between uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Republic of Arab Egypt. And those uh, relations are diversified. They are strong in the field uh, of politics, in the field of security, and as well in ec the field of ec economic relations that are inclusive, that include ex uh, trade exchanges, uh, exports and imports uh, from, Saudi, uh, from Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and the trade exchanges within the limit. Egypt uh, is the ranks 20th among the exporter and the importer countries from and to Saudi Arabia. Also, there is a very important uh, point here. Saudi Arabia hosts hundreds of thousands of uh, the Egyptian brothers who contribute in the development of Saudi Arabia and contribute towards also the development of Egypt through the monetary and financial transfers and remittances. Also, one of the basic aspects of our relationships, relationship is uh, investment. Saudi Arabia is the largest investor in Egypt. And with the will of God, through the efforts that are being exerted here in Rome to improve the climate of investment, whether that be through the adoption of a new investment law and a one window policy or the other procedures that are being un undertaken at the present time who aspire to further Saudi investments in Egypt. I uh, wish to underline that solving some uh, uh, pending qu uh, problems will contribute to that end greatly. It is a pleasure for me to find a large number of investors from Saudi Arabia partaking part in this meeting. As a matter of fact, there are agreements that are going to be signed, particularly in the field of energy. I also wish to briefly mention the regional cooperation and the role of Saudi Arabia and Egypt and also the other Af Arab countries. And we all realize that there is a free trade zone, Arab free trade zone, that is great. And that the zone has started to be implemented about 17 years ago. There are certain obstacles, but I believe that we have taken great strides in order to realize that zone. And we uh, hope to apply the decision or to enforce the Arab League decision at the, the level of heads of state to have a Arab uh, a custom union. This is a very important uh, uh, need in addition to the other measures that would lead to Arab integration in relation to infrastructure or other steps. Also, there is cooperation among the different uh, common Arab institutions that played a very important role in the Arab region and its development, whether those be the, uh, the Islamic Development Bank or the Arab Fund for Social and Economic Development and the Arab Monetary Fund and other financial institutions. His Royal uh, Highness uh, uh, Crown Prince uh, Megrema Abdais spoke yesterday about the historic relationships and our support uh, to extend to the uh, Republic of Egypt. Only here I want to underline that this support will continue with the will of God 
in order to support the development efforts in Egypt. And in this field, I want to urge the international community, whether that be the international financial institutions or the leading countries in the world, to come to support the development in Egypt. In conclusion, once again, I wish to extend my congratulations to the government of Egypt for convening this successful conference. And I extend my gratitude for my invitation to speak to you today, and I wish you every success, and uh, uh, thank you. We thank Dr. Ibrahim Ibn Abdelaziz al Asaf, the Finance Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And now we will listen to Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber, the UAE's State Minister and uh, Head of the Coordinating Committee for the Support of the Egyptian Economy. In the name of God, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, Assalamu alaikum. Allow me first to extend my sincerest gratitude to the leadership, government, and people of the Arab Republic of Egypt for their great hospitality and a warm welcome. We in the United Arab Emirates are proud of the strength and depth and breadth of rel that defines our relationship with the Arab Republic of Egypt, a relationship whose foundations were laid by our founding father, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan, and Hayan, may God rest his soul. It's a relationship that continues to develop and grow day after day under our wise and visionary leadership of the UAE, uh, led by Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. As you are well aware, that uh, from the end of 2010 to June 2013, Egypt passed through a critical period that had adverse effects uh, on its uh, stability and economy, in particular. And, and uh, to uh, that end, the UAE leadership stood firmly by the people of Egypt and directed uh, to me to handle this port portfolio. I was honored uh, to work on this uh, portfolio. It is why a joint UAE Egypt task force was formed, and we discussed the best ways to achieve social and economic uh, stability and development. For various discussions between our two countries, uh, it was immediately evident um, with our colleagues in the Egyptian government uh, to have priority that was set on infrastructure and development projects by addressing needs we had cut across energy, housing, food security, education, vocational training, health care, transportation. Every one of these projects uh, is specifically aimed at impacting the daily lives of the Egyptian people in, uh, so that uh, all uh, the Egyptian people uh, will uh, benefit from this immediately. In order to achieve quick and tangible results, the leadership of the UAE gave directions to adopt a new and unique approach, work hand in hand with our Egyptian partners in a tangible manner by being present uh, and on the ground and to roll up our sleeves and to work hand in hand in our brothers in Egypt. 
Um, today, we are proud to claim that this new approach has resulted in tangible results. Uh, these projects uh, um, uh, provide 900,000 job, jobs benefiting nearly 10 million Egyptians. And allow me here to say that this would have never been possible had it been uh, for the collaborative spirit and efforts of our Egyptian partners and the UAE Egypt Task Force. This spirit uh, has vastly contributed to the realization of a majority of these important projects in a short period of time. This also included the close collaboration in setting up uh, a plan uh, to uh, have a sustainable economic recovery plan and to put it on the sustainable uh, 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 growth. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference is not an objective in itself. It is but a milestone in the realization of a comprehensive Egypt the future plan. It's only a first step of many that aim uh, to achieve a sustainable economic future for the nation and its people. And today, taking into consideration the size and caliber of participation yesterday, I can safely say that this uh, conference achieved its two primary objectives. On the political front, yesterday uh, was a clear signal that the international community is engaged in Egypt and has taken a keen understanding of its pivotal role in the region economically. This conference is a clear indication that Egypt on the right track towards building a sustainable economy. And in the reality of things, we must all stand by Egypt today because Egypt's security, stability in the region is the region's security and stability. Esteemed guests, over the past few months, the government of Egypt has implemented bold decisions for economic reforms, including gradual lifting of energy subsidies, tax reforms, amendments to investment laws and regulations. And uh, today, the, I, uh, the in, in, uh, IMF concluded uh, an Article 4 consultation for Egypt with positive, very positive projections for its economic plan. Esteemed guests, a healthy and sustainable economy requires a steady inflow of foreign direct investment, being global or domestic. And here I would like to say that we have important investments that will be declared in Sharm el-Sheikh. And here I have to congratulate entrepreneurs and businessmen and investor community that are here today who recognize the opportunity of this first mover advantage, as it is the case now in the Arab Republic of Egypt and through this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, under the leadership This is under the leadership of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi. And part real participation, practical participation from the government and the Egyptian people. Now we have a real workshop. Now we can see all a better future for Egypt and tangible uh, um, achievements on the reality and through this podium and this conference, it's very important to focus on exploring the means of enhancing bilateral and multilateral partnership and to be realistic and optimistic and we'll focus on the positive energy. And allow me here to emphasize uh, three major points. First of all, this conference and has achieved great success as this uh, galaxy and elite of political leaders and leaders of uh, business community and multilateral institutions 
to infuse the spirit uh, uh, of uh, 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 the future. And what we are seeing is only a starting point to build the new Egypt. And the business community should be committed to, to strategic uh, long-term investments. And also, the Egyptian government should go ahead with the implementation of the reforms that it has initiated with high efficiency, because the actual implementation on the ground is a vital element to success. Thirdly, the success and prosperity of Egypt is the cornerstone of a greater vision, one of tolerance, moder uh, uh, moderation, stability, uh, prosperity for the Egypt, the future, and for our entire region. In conclusion, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference and those who have contributed to the success of this platform. And let me wish you all success and all the good luck. Thank you. Mm.